you know, that's something that we're talking about quite a bit. You know, there's a lot of things. we got to make sure the communication is clear and concise. Uh, I need to do better at making decisions faster and quicker and getting that information to the quarterback and being on the same page with him. So that's something we're talking about uh, this morning all the way to this evening and making sure that it's it's, it's got to improve. The Broncos won on Sunday, but it sure didn't feel like it with the – clock management issue, getting the play selected, getting it communicated, getting it called, getting to the point where, for the first time that I can ever remember, outside of a basketball arena, the crowd was counting down the play clock. Yeah, I think partially to help and partially to mock. Yeah. This is not good because nobody else does this. And here you are, two games into your coaching career, working for owners who didn't hire you, and you are failing at one of the most fundamental aspects of the job, especially when you're the head coach and the play caller. You pick the play, you communicate the play. And, you know, I remember C- Coach Dungy saying this years ago, some guys just can't do it. You've got the macro issues of being the head coach, the micro issue of – calling the plays if you can't do both at the same time you find somebody else who can and maybe that's what nathaniel hackett's gonna have to do chris yeah that you know this goes back to you know what we talked about last week after the monday night game you know it's unfortunate because now everybody's gonna put everything he does under a microscope because of that late game decision to kick the 64 yard field goal so now we're watching him closely to see what you know how is he gonna handle the rest of the game and then the fact that, yes, even in the game one, there was play call issues with the play clock, and then it continues to game two, you know, it just gets all accentuated by that decision to kick the field goal and take Russell Wilson off the field on fourth and five in a big moment. So, yeah, they're going to have to win football games, and he's going to have to have a few games of showing, wait, I'm on the ball here. We're not going down to two, three, one, right? And getting to that point on the clock, and he's managing the game the right way to to silence the critics. So that's where it's it's, it's going to take that. But 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 the other thing, Mike, too. I, I don't know. I just and again, this is I have no knowledge. I'm just reading into what he said. The fact that he's talking about with Russell Wilson in the process too. That 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 to me, I was like, well, what? Why? What is it? Russell should just be taking the play and telling it to the huddle. Is there something there? I I don't know. You know, again, is is Russell taking a little too long, spitting out the play, giving a few too many, hey, remember to do this, remember to do that before he calls the play too? It just I just thought that was kind of curious uh when he when he brought that aspect of the whole conversation up. There there's a there's a, a little bit of this that I think splashes onto Russell. I think of how confused he looked last Monday night. I I I yeah. He has a history, it's, they have a history in Seattle of taking the ball and the clock down to two, three, one his whole time too. So that's the other thing, too. Now, I think Pete Carroll, in a lot of ways, wanted to play that way. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe there is something to Russell Wilson, too, who just takes his time a little bit and getting in and out of the huddle and getting the line of scrimmage and getting everything in order. I don't know how clocks work in your house, but in my house they go 3-2-1, not 2-3-1. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Is that Maybe what I got just some said? Special engineering. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn. I think you did it twice too. I think I missed it the first time because when you said it the second time, I was like, "That sounds familiar," and it sounds wrong. <laughs> We're doing panic meter here. I haven't gotten to the point where we set up the segment on a scale of one to ten. Even though the Broncos are one and one, we'll see them Sunday night. 49ers at the Broncos. Kyle Shanahan coming in with a chip on his shoulder about what they did to his dad. You made that point a week or so ago, and it makes for a more compelling game. Where are you, one to ten? on the Broncos at one and one. I, I'm, I'm just going to go a five. I'm not much more than that. I mean, I'm not going to judge it too harshly here early on. Like you said, they are one and one. And, you know, if it isn't for the running back holding the ball twice on the one yard line against Seattle, they're probably two and oh. So there's still things to be positive about here. Um, I'm, I, but, but you know, we, I'm teetering on the edge of, wait, if we see this another week and another week, it could, this could be an eight or nine in a hurry. But for right now, I'm, I'm going to go down the middle of the road with a five right now. I'll say five for the team, but eight for the coach. Okay. I think that he is slipping into quicksand, and he had better get this figured out. And, look, if, if he can't figure out what play to call – and get it communicated in 40 seconds, how's he going to fix the bigger picture issues from one week to the next? Because it's moving just as quickly. You've got a lot of things to do. I just think that what we're seeing here is, and again, some coordinators, when they become coaches, 
They can't master everything they're supposed to do. It's overwhelming. It's the Peter Principle. The, the concept from the late 60s where we all rise to the level of our own incompetence. We keep getting promoted. Hey, you did a good job. You're promoted. You're promoted. Then you get promoted into a job that you can't do. And it's quite possible Nathaniel Hackett has been promoted into a job that he just can't do. Like North Turner, like Wade Phillips, all due respect. Others who were great coordinators, not great coaches. Zach Taylor was a great coach last year when they went to the Super Bowl. Now they're 0-2. What is your panic meter for the defending AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals after their first two losses, Chris? I'm going higher with this one. It's an eight. And uh, it might actually – it might be a nine right now. I know, hey, it's week one. We have some issues against protecting T.J. Watt and the Steelers, and we didn't play in the preseason. Okay, that's one thing. But then to go into week two and really have none of it corrected, and really the pass protection was worse against a defensive line that I don't think is as talented as as the one in Pittsburgh. I mean, that's what's concerning. And then, to me, just looks like, you know, resting on last year's laurels as an offense, like, hey, all the plays we ran last year and all that, it just will work. No, people have studied you. They got a a full season of this. Things got to change. You know, to me, they don't do enough on offense to scare you. You've heard me say, I think, a little last week, there's no motions, there's no crazy you know, formations or sets there on that side of the ball. And then the defense not looking all that dominant in this game either against the Cowboys. Like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little panicked about what I'm seeing in Cincinnati. And poor Joe Burrow. I mean, to be under pressure like that is, is ridiculous. Well, constantly getting hit. The offensive line not nearly where it needs to be despite all the changes that were made. Right. And they have a return to the Jets. Remember last year it was the put Mike White in the Hall of Fame game. Uh, They go back to the Jets this week. Then they have the Dolphins on Thursday night, short week. Then they're at the Ravens on Sunday night. We're going to get to see a lot of the Bengals up close and personal in the coming weeks. We'll see where they are. Let's go to the Colts now. Even though they got a tie in week one, they were down 20 to three. These are the two teams in the division. They should be running roughshod over the Texans and the Jaguars. They can't win in Jacksonville. They looked horrible, horrible on Sunday. Look, I'm doing my power rankings now for week three. Not that they mean anything to anyone except me, and they barely mean anything to me. But the Colts the Colts are slipping. The Colts may free fall. The Colts may go all the way to the bottom by the time it's done because they're winless and they were hapless against the Jaguars on Sunday, Chris. What's your panic meter for them? It's uh, eight and a half, right? nine again. I might put that and make it a nine. I, I, there, there's real issues here for, for sure. You know, what happened to the wall? They built a wall. Yeah, the what wall. What happened to that wall? Hey, I, there's two things I want to say here. First off, I think Jacksonville is a very talented football team. I do. And I think they're going to be in the mix here a little bit in the AFC. I do. I, I look and I watched this game on film yesterday. But this was a this was an ass whooping. I mean, it, it just to epic proportions. And that's what's concerning. You know, hey, you lose a tough football game and blah, blah, blah. But, like, to your point, it was obliteration. It was, like, after the first drive where they moved the ball and got, like, two first downs and then he threw the interception, it was like, whoa, they can't do Jack diddly squat here from here on out. That's where it's concerning. Like you said, the offensive line, which is supposed to be dominant, was not, you know, was pretty good in the run game against the Texans. But, you know, Matt Ryan got hit a lot. And this last game, they were completely dominated. And Matt Ryan... His arm looks weak in, in, in the inability to stretch the ball and push the ball down the field, a la like Phillip Rivers two years ago. Those things concern me a little bit. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I don't know about the Colts. I don't know either, Mike. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm at an eight or nine with the panic with them. Tom Brady has ruined our expectations for all aging quarterbacks. We think they're all going to keep their fastball into their 40s no. and maybe 50s. And some of these guys just are going to reach a point where they can't do it anymore. And I hope Matt Ryan's not there because I enjoy watching him play, and he's been a great part of the NFL, but something is badly off for the Colts, and right. I don't see it getting better anytime soon. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.